What's cracking guys? This is the second video of the series where I'll teach you everything you need to know about building your own deep learning rig. And as you can see here, I've got all of the components finally here. I got the RTX 3090 from Nvidia just earlier today. Look at this beauty. And basically it's a gift from them. Uh, I'm very grateful for that. I think they are doing an amazing job powering educators to keep on doing what they do best. So. In this video, we're going to assemble the machine and it's probably gonna last three or four hours because I'm, I'm doing this for the first time from scratch. So I'll have to do some type of a time lapse to just kind of make it enjoyable, watchable and educational. So let's dig into it. Okay guys, so first things first, let's start with the RTX 3090. Let me cut this thing. And I, pro I don't have proper tools, so it's just like uh, basically trying my best here not to break something in this process. Oh my God. Oh my God, look at this one. Look at this. Ah, oh, let me try not to break it, but this is amazing. Oh my God, what a beast. Okay. Take it out, and here it is, RTX 3090. And this is going to make my models go burr, so that's super amazing. Okay guys, next up we've got Liquid Freezer Cooler to 280 ARGB. Uh, this thing looks beautiful on images, so let's see whether it's as nice in, the, in, in real life. Okay guys, this one is as beefy as, as, as RTX 3090. Uh, it's huge. Let me unpack it further. That's a reminder for me to take a cold shower. Uh, random alarms throughout the day. That's my life. Okay, uh, here we are. And here it is. I have a feeling that this will take me much longer to set up than all of the other components. Also judging by the uh, comments on online about setting up cooling si liquid cooling systems. Looks fairly, let me try and show you here. Looks fairly alien-like, like a spaceship or something. Very cool, that's, that's actually the, the part, the, the, this, this plate here is what goes on top of the processor to cool it. And then the water goes through the pipes here, obviously, and the ventilators here are circulating the water, cooling it down. And then this thing is actually cooling the, this is the contact point with the processor. Okay guys, here's the motherboard. This is uh, Asus Crosshair X670E Hero. Let me unpack it and show you this one. Wow man, a, a lot of books here. So many manuals, I'm already getting scared. And as I said, this is the first time I'm doing something like this. I did tweak and play with electronics. I studied electronics, but I never had to set up my whole uh, PC. So this is, well, I guess there is first time for everything and, um, and why not record it on camera? <laughs> that was the line of reasoning, I guess. And here is the motherboard. Looks beautiful. And I think I'm playing it dangerously by not having any type of a, a EST glove just to discharge myself, but uh, I'm a complete beginner and hopefully I'll have enough luck not to get into that situation. How I broke my machine learning rig in five steps. <laughs> okay, here are the rest of the components. Let's go with the CPU, uh, the AMD Ryzen 9, 7950X. That's a mouthful. Okay, here it is. Here it is. This thing cost cost me 700 something pounds. You better be good, man. You better be good. The rest of the box is literally just some foamy material and everything you get is this. 
and you, you get a huge box thinking there is something additional in there, but it's just like, nah, it's literally super small processor. <laughs> Next up, the NVMe SSD. Here it is, the two terabyte version one. Beautiful. Here it is. Here is the whole thing right here. Super small. Okay, we are left with uh, RAM memory. Here is the Kingston um, 64 gigabytes of RAM. Here it is. That's 32 gigabytes of RAM right there. And here is the SSD 8 terabyte version. Uh, and when I say version, I just mean eight terabytes. And it uses the SATA protocol, so that means it's way slower than the uh, NVMe SSDs. Okay, here it is. Looks very solid, hmm, pun intended. Okay, here it is. That's the eight terabyte. Hopefully it's focusing correctly. And we're left with the PSU and the case, and that's it, we can start the assembly. Okay, a lot of cables here as expected because it's a PSU after all. It's a cable, one, and then there's some more cables, and there's some more cables. My God, my God. And there is some more cables. And finally, there is a bit more cables. Amazing. Trying my best to stay organized. I'm just putting the junk right there and putting the components here on top of the table where we'll be ultimately assembling the thing. So, okay. And the moment of truth. Here is the PSU EVGA 1600 watts um, golden gold power ratio. Uh, looks very nice. Fairly heavy, as you would expect from a 1600 watt power supply. And a very beefy ventilator and looks very nice as well. Okay guys, so the easier part of the assembly is pretty much um, uh, over. I have the components unpacked here on the table and uh, the next step will be to start assembling it. So one thing I know is that you need to start with the motherboard and then first stick in the, the necessary components there and only later uh, plug it inside of the uh, PSU unless you have some other constraints, but hopefully that's gonna be um, the way to go with my setup, so let's see. I'm gonna do some reading and start from the PSU. I'm gonna try and plug it inside of the case. I'm gonna put the case here uh, when I start uh, uh, connecting them, but for now I'm just gonna do some reading uh, from this manual, figure stuff out, and uh, try and not uh, burn my house down. Okay, apparently there is only four screws right here, whereas I need, I think, eight of them right here. So that's the first hurdle I'm facing. I have to check whether I maybe uh, missed them out in the box, so I'm heading to the junk section <laughs> to try and find four more screws. But judging that this thing is sealed, that's probably it. But this is fairly beefy PSU to only have four four screws, that's kind of weird and, and kind of uh, scary, to be honest. Okay, that's it. Apparently there is only four screws for my uh, PSU. Hopefully that's gonna do the job. Let's try it out. So let me grab a case and let's start plugging in the PSU. Here it is. It's a beefy monster. I'm gonna try and put it on the table somehow. Okay, um, it's not intuitive, so I'll have to Google how to remove the front panel. That's it. 
We are there, Google. Remove the panel from Lian Li dynamic case. Okay guys, I realize it's gonna be much better for me to first go and do some research. I'm gonna do some learning and then I'll start the assembly because this is completely um, not the best way to go, just ad hoc start assembling stuff. Okay guys, finally, I've read the manuals. Uh, I watched the other people uh, creating their own builds and I feel comfortable enough to get started and building this thing. So basically this motherboard manual has even like steps of what we should be uh, focusing on first. Basically we're gonna first install the CPU, then the memory modules, the RAM, uh, then the SSD, and then we'll work our way from there. Let's get started. Okay guys, I think the first Thing that we need to do is basically lift this thing up. So let me just see how we can do that. So I guess I just need to pull here or something. No fucking idea. I don't know what I'm doing, but God damn it, I'm gonna try. Back to the manual. Back to the manual. I'm a man, my man. Okay, this should somehow work. I don't want to break it. Okay, here it is. Here it is, god damn it. Ah, so much stress. What up, what's up next? Should I lift this up or what? I guess so. Okay, I think I'm on the right way. So, next up, the processor. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. AMD Ryzen 9. Okay, so one tip that I'm aware of is first, don't touch the processor with your hands, at least the, not the pins. And then there's also this, I don't know whether you can see, but there is this small, golden triangle right there and you're supposed to basically put that one I guess uh, somewhere here let's see how it looks like guys I have no idea what I'm working so do apologize my noobness I'm gonna try my best so I'm trying my best not to touch any of the pins and I'm also electrostatically discharged. I'm just touching some metal case I have and that's it. I don't have the gloves, but I think we should be good enough here. Okay, it says, uh, uh, um, I would assume this goes like this. Nothing else would make sense. So let's try. Okay, so next step is, I think I just have to Put this thing back here and then just press or something. Oh my god, I'm gonna break something here. Oh fuck my life. <laughs> If I've done everything correctly, I just need to pull this down right here and then squeeze this back in. It's giving me too much fucking pressure. Okay, that should be it. Okay, next up, we need to uh, plug in the RAM. And if you, so one thing to keep in mind when you're when you're basically installing RAM is you have, depending on how many sticks you have, I have two, uh, there are rules where you wanna plug them in because of the uh, basically bandwidth or something. So let's see, so here uh, it's the uh, DIMM A2 first, whatever that means. So I just find uh, here the instruction manual says, uh, uh, 
Um, so basically, here is the CPU, and uh, the one that I need to use is the second one from the CPU and the fourth one from the CPU, okay? Uh, I think I watched some videos where they say go with the first one and the third one, but I guess it's very uh, motherboard specific, so do read the manual for your motherboard. Okay, here is the RAM. It's a beauty. The Beast DDR5. Okay, so for this one, as I said, we're using the second one here and we're also using the fourth one so let me plug them in I just need to see where the dent is in so I would assume this should be like this or like this both seem to work I think this is gonna work I'm retarded It's kind of hard to film and uh, do this at the same time. Ah. I'm just going to uh, move it like this and let's just see whether I'm going to break something or not. So this looks okay if I'm to do it like this. Well, the worst thing is both ways seem to work. So how do I know what's the right direction? Oh my god, that's something they don't tell you when they're making these builds. So I guess I'm just gonna pop it in and see what happens. Okay, that was a good sound. Usually, nice! Okay, this just required a bit more pressure than what I would expect. Oh my god. Whew. Tiring. Okay, let me try it. the second one. So as I said, the fourth. Um, so the second one is gonna be easier already, I, was, I would assume. So let's just push it a bit harder. And it should snap inside. Let me turn it around. Okay, here it is. Let me just see whether Everything is good here. Okay, nice. And did this click? I don't like the sound of it. I'm gonna remove it. Okay, I think we're good. I think this should be good uh, in case it's not working well. I'll have to start over again. But that's it, let's now go with the SSD. Okay, let me grab the SSD. So that means we'll have to basically remove the screws from this one. And uh, that's where the M2 uh, NF, NVMe, <laughs> oh my God, NVMe uh, is going uh, to, so let's, uh, Start unscrewing. I don't even know how to screw, man. I'm... Okay, this looks like it's loose. Let's try this one. I just went and bought this uh, kit for 10 pounds. And it's a magnetic tip uh, screwdriver. It's always a smart thing when you're assembling uh, anything really okay so I think this should now pop up cool looks like it's working I didn't break anything so far okay so uh, here I don't know whether you can see but I'm gonna try not to lose the screws but there is the uh, protective foil so you have to remove that one otherwise the cooling will not be as good uh, so let me just remove that thingy Whoops, I just have to remove the, the foil like that, and that's it. Cool, so far so good. Okay, now I have to remove this one. And I think that 
the SSD goes right here. So here is the this thingy, the SSD. Let's try and see how this goes inside here. So I can tell that this goes here. So that part is not problematic. The part that, that I don't know whether I should remove this or not. Let me just double check in the manual before I start doing it. Just wanna be 100% sure I'm not screwing something up. Okay, okay, is there any SSD installation here? Okay, apparently I don't have to remove this thing. So there are these circles that were confusing me and apparently uh, those are used when you have a dip different um, form factor SSD. So this is the 2280 and so we should be good to go. So we, the, the only thing I need to do is basically put this under an, under an angle, tuck it in and then put it down here. And now I just have to apparently latch this or something like this. So you heard the sound. So that sounds good. Cool. Here it is. It popped inside there. And now I think the only thing left to do is to return back the um, cooling system. So here it is. And I think this was the way I'm supposed to mount this. So here, or is it? Okay, it feels like I'm doing the right thing, but am I? Okay, I think it's working. I think it's working, guys. Oh yeah, nice. This seems to be working as expected. Nice and clean. Unscrew it just a bit more, not too tight, not too loose. And here we are. Nice. That's it. Three components um, are here. We have the CPU, we have the two RAM sticks, we have the SSD. Now let's continue on with the other components. Uh, and yeah. Okay guys, in case you buy the same Lee and Lee case, um, in order to remove the front panel, which was the first hurdle I had when I started assembling this machine, you have to remove, remove these two screws uh, at the back side of the case. After that, you can basically just slide this like this and then you can remove the top basically. So here it is. Now the top is removed. Let me put it here. And then for the front panel, you just have to kind of lift it up. And additional mistake I made is I removed the protective cover and I'm now ruining this glass with my, with my fingertips. This kind of sucks, but uh, I guess a rookie mistake. I'm gonna learn the next time. Okay, let me put this somewhere here on a safe spot. Same thing with, uh, with the front panel. You just lift it up and that's it. We are good. And the same thing for, with the side panel here. You just lift it up there. You might have to push from underneath and here it is. So now we have this thing popping up. Cool. Now let's basically, I'm gonna place it like this so we can see the placement of the motherboard and then we can uh, keep on working from there. Okay, the problem with these liquid cooling systems is that you get a bunch of components and you're left to figure out what to do. And so, uh, yeah, basically it boils down to just finding the right YouTube video. Also, um, in, in their defense, they do have a nice uh, setup guide, but it's like there are minor differences and so you kind of have to watch out for that. So I found a video that's using these components and so I'm going to be using these so-called spacers to set it up. So let's see how that goes. So apparently now there are two of these slates 
and the thinner one goes uh, to the bottom part of the motherboard, the thicker one goes on top. So let's do it. I'll link the, the instruction manual in case you buy the same liquid cooling system as I. So it's gonna be a bit easier for you than for me. I don't know whether you can see it, but this is literally almost touching the capacitor right here. And I'm not sure whether that shielding is conductive. Hopefully not. Otherwise, this is super bad design. And it's kind of very tight. Everything is tight in here. Always do both screws a little bit before you commit to screwing one of them till the very end. So, next up, I somehow have to put these guys. So these guys are supposed to go right here. I don't know whether you can see these, but I'm just going to connect them like that. And then that's gonna be going down, down on top of the um, plates we've just set up. So here we are. These are the threaded screws I mentioned, and those are gonna go here together with the back with this back plate, or if I can call it like that. Okay, here we are. Also, just watch out for the wire here. You don't want to squeeze it underneath the, the plate. So now I just have to do basically this, and we have a clean metal plate. That's it. So we're gonna put some. I'm gonna do. I think it's called a P type or something. So I'm gonna put a just a tiny droplet on top of the center of the CPU, and that's the style of the. Um, that's basically the style that I'm gonna use for the thermal paste um, thingy. But before that, let's first mount the motherboard inside of the case, and then uh, let's continue on from there. Okay, let's do it. Let me move the. The water cooling somewhere here and then let me place the actual case a bit closer so we can see it so something like this move the screwdrivers here is the case and inside of it we're going to position the motherboard so I'm every now and then I'm just touching the case just to discharge in case there there is anything um, okay, this is glorious. I don't even know how to rotate this. So I assume it's gonna be, let me just place it down for a second. And I would assume this goes like this. So, I think we're gonna have plenty of space up there for the water cooling. That's encouraging and the GPU is gonna go down here. I think it's gonna be a bit tight for the second GPU, so that's gonna be interesting. Oh my God. I don't think I'll be able to put the second GPU here, guys. Um, that might be a deal breaker. Although for now, I think a single GPU is gonna do the job for me, and I was a noob doing this first setup, so I'll, bet, I'll get better, so next time. <laughs> Uh, I'll spend some more money because I'm stupid. Okay, now let's see how we can screw this in. Okay, here are the four screws that we're gonna use. Uh, looks like that's, that's everything I got. I would assume there should be at least one more here and one more here, so that's six, but I only see four. So yeah, I guess that's it. So this is where the magnetic um, screwdrivers are gonna come uh, in handy, hopefully. Let me try and do that. Huh, are these even the right screws? I'm not sure anymore. Because they don't seem to be getting in. So I have to remove the motherboard for a second and just double check that this is actually the right screw okay it's not working i'm struggling but i have a i think i have a solution and it's called sucker snickers 
Nice, bad jokes. Okay. Whew, looking good. We have the motherboard fixated to the case. Now, let me think for a second what should I do next. Um, okay, guys, let's mount this baby. So, this, uh, these are going to be very cool. These are A RGB, basically controllable RGB lightings. And those are going to come right here. Hopefully it's gonna, there's gonna be enough space and I think there is that's very cool with this case uh, And then I'm gonna plug this in somehow. I'm gonna see how the layout is gonna look like um, Let me just think for a second um, Does this make sense these would probably be Reversed Yeah, I think it's like this But I have to double check on YouTube for a second and I'll be back. Okay, so basically how it's gonna be mounted is this goes like this and then this the cables uh, where the liquid will be flowing go there and then I just put it like this and voila. Okay, here we are. As you can see, it can barely fit and I'm gonna put eight screw uh, screws here and at the last line here as well that's going to be the setup so i just need to find the actual screws that are correct for this for the liquid cooler okay after a little bit of search i found these ones that came with my case and they look like the proper screws for um in order to hold this this uh radiator basically fixated to the case Um, let's now put it down there and for the fun part let's put some thermal paste and uh, get this thing up and running okay look like something like this basically so let's do it okay I'm going to basically be using this so-called P method and that's simply a small dot uh, on the center of the CPU so I'm gonna just test it to see how easy it is to squeeze it out before I start doing it on the CPU and then I'm gonna do it there okay you can see here and the devices for the amount of this paste should be equally like similar to the size of the capacitors you can see next to your uh, CPU so let me let me try and do that right now I'm gonna try and zoom in a little bit here and hopefully you can see a bit better Okay, hopefully that's uh, enough. Okay, now for the front part, I need to uh, basically stick this on top of it. And let's hope everything works as expected. Later on, we're gonna connect one of these to the, uh, basically one is gonna be for power and the other one is gonna be for controlling the RGB lighting on the uh, ventilator, on the fan, sorry, um, that you can see right there up there okay let me now do it okay looks good by the way one thing i forgot to mention uh when you're installing these um uh, all-in-one um aio uh, systems you basically want to have the radiator uh above the uh above your uh pump here um because of, of potential uh, air pockets inside of it. So you don't wanna have air accumulating here around the, uh, the cooling part uh, because otherwise it's gonna corrode very fast or something like that. So basically, if, if you put it like this, then the, because of the basically currents inside of the pipes here, the air is gonna be 
uh, pushed out all the way to the top here to the radiator so you won't have to 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 worry about that as much uh, although I'll probably have to change um, like this this liquid uh, freezer uh, cooler in maybe like uh, six months or one year I'm gonna be closely monitoring it uh, because I don't want um, a leak or, or, or something to, to cause any issues. I'm gonna definitely profile, do some benchmarking and see the temperatures, etc, etc. But yeah. Okay, now the next step is to um, find it in the manual of my motherboard to find where I should plug in these, um, basically the connectors. Uh, so it's either the, the fan, uh, although I think that my, my motherboard actually has dedicated um, connectors uh, for headers for, for these connectors. So let me uh, do some research, briefly go through the manual and then I'm gonna connect them. Okay, finally figured it out. Uh, basically the, the three pin uh, connector is for the ARGB um, functionality. Uh, so, and this one goes to uh, basically the header right up there um, and uh, the, 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 the second one with the four uh, pins here uh, is just connecting to the CPU uh, fan header and that's it. I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna later deal with the cable management. For now that should be good enough. Let me just try and zoom in a little bit there so you can see what I've done. Basically this one is the RGB and by the way, this is very cool. This is the this is going to show me error codes. Hopefully, it's gonna <laughs> hopefully it's gonna stay turned off. Uh, but if it's a lit and it's, if it's showing a, a number, it's an error code. So nice, nice thing to have. Finally, GPU. We're gonna place the GPU right here, and after the GPU, the only thing left will be to put the PSU on the other side and connect the cables and we should be ready. Okay, now we have to install the RTX 3090 Founders Edition. Beautiful card. Look at this, look at this. They see me rolling. And now let me just um, remove a couple of uh, screws here so we can have enough place and I'm gonna stick it right inside there. And then later we're gonna have this, this connector here that's gonna go, I think, somewhere here yep and then these two are gonna be connected with the PSU that's it let's do it first let's remove this ah oh, beautiful okay and let me remove this one as well nice looking beautiful so now let me just see I'm gonna first Remove this part here. This is just the connector, the protector for the uh, connector right here. So, you can just see roughly how much space this is gonna take. And I guess we probably need to remove the these three screws here. So let me go and do that. And I know this is not professional looking, the, the camera, like my, my arms are kind of um, blocking the, 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 the view, but hopefully uh, me just documenting this journey is gonna encourage you guys to do the same thing. As you can see here, I'm completely new to doing this. Literally for every single component, I had to watch a YouTube video before I started doing it just to be on the safe side. So I've done the same thing for the GPU. I saw what I need to do and I'm now just pretty much just executing. So let's mount this one. It's gonna be, a, it's a heavy one. Okay, I think that was it guys. I think it clicked. It looks like it's mounted correctly. Okay guys, we're here. I forgot to turn on my camera while I was just uh, fixating uh, these two screws here. Uh, I think this is now ready. Okay, let's put the uh, connector uh, inside of the GPU. There it is. 
we got it and then the connectors from the PSU are gonna go there. I think we're done. Uh, the only thing I have to, to do now is to put the PSU and connect the cables and we can try and power it up uh, after I do some, some just basic sanity checks. Awesome guys, so far so good. Okay, now let's play with the PSU and I'm gonna uh, basically uh, open up these cables, see what I have here and then connect them to the PSU and after that I'm gonna plug in the PSU inside of, inside of the case. That, that sounds like a strategy. Okay guys, here, here are the cables. I have um, the power uh, cables connected here. So it says MB here, so motherboard. And this one connects to the motherboard. So it's the power. Then we have the VGA cables. I have two CPU cables here. And I have one SATA uh, cable here because I'll be connecting it to the SSD, um, a terabyte SSD. So that's it, that's the idea. Okay. I'm trying to disconnect uh, the cables that came with the case and I guess these are gonna be connected to the front panel and stuff so let me just see what I have here uh, okay so basically I have no idea what this is this one and then I have a couple more cables here one says Power, power LED plus, minus, HET LED. So this is gonna be connected to the front panel, I assume. And um, HD audio. Okay, so I have to connect these two to the motherboard. Uh, and I have to check out what these two are. I have to do some Googling and then I can continue working on this. Okay guys, only a couple more things left to do. That's to connect the PSU. So I have all of the cables here attached already. It's a mess. You can see there is a lot of cables here. Um, after the PSU is connected, I'm done. We're ready to power this beast on. Uh, I could also add the SSD, the SATA SSD. I could add the antenna. We have this Wi-Fi antenna. And finally, um, I forgot to mention that in the first video, basically, I forgot to order the uh, case fans, so I've done that um, basically yesterday. So I ordered um, uh, six RGB case fans. Those are coming, I think, in tonight. So I'm going to post hoc just connect them as well. But first, we want to make sure that the machine can be powered on. After that's the case, then I can start adding the the other components which are not necessary to get this thing up and running. So yeah, let's uh, let's first connect the uh, power, the, the front panel connectors. So those are basically the connectors that connect to your to the front part of the of your of your case. The the, the, the usual buttons, the power button, the, the the USBs and stuff. So there are like four cables in total: one for audio, um, and um, these other ones are for USB. And finally for the reset power button, etc., etc. So let's connect those guys. So here's the audio uh, header. I'm gonna connect that one down there. I'm gonna just uh, push it through the, the hole in the case. And then we have the, uh, basically, as I said, the power button and the reset button, etc. Those are gonna be connected to the front part as well. So I'm gonna just push them somewhere here probably. And then I have the USB uh, and USB-C uh, ports. Those are also gonna be basically going here. So I'm just gonna push them through and then, yeah, you can connect them on the other side. I have one more component right here that's going to be adapter for the power reset buttons uh, and all of the other front bottom buttons, buttons. So I'm just going to stick this small guy in. So this guy is gonna be going inside of the front panel connector right there. Okay, just making sure right here that I'm not that I'm not um, messing something up. So I'm just looking at my motherboard manual and then I'm gonna connect this one down there. Ok 
Okay, apparently uh, I'm missing a reset uh, pin. I'm not sure why, but it is how it is. I'm going to just plug it in like this and we are done. Next thing, I'm gonna just connect the USB-C cables. Uh, this one seems to be too short. Okay, let me quickly show you what I've connected. So we have the, um, basically the uh, audio jack right there. We have the, as you can see there, the, the black cable going inside there. Those are the, the front panel connectors, the power button, the reset button. And then finally, I have here uh, USB. So this is this big guy here. So this one here is basically, let me try and show you, it's a bit a mess. So this is the USB and this is the USB-C, the above one. You just have to stick them there inside of the motherboard and that's it. And the last component, let's connect the PSU. I'm going to turn around this case like this and we have free spot for the PSU. I'm going to plug it in right now. And then we'll have to just pass the connector somehow uh, through these uh, rubber uh, basically holes. So let me just see how this is gonna go. Okay, now it's free. I had to remove that metal thingy. And now we're going to place the PSU right here. Uh, that should be it. It's fitting perfectly. Okay, that's it. It's mounted, it's stabilized. Now I have to basically um, just connect the motherboard and that means I'll probably be putting this guy here. So this guy will go here. It's gonna be a bit too much cabling. I'm gonna later do the cable management. For now, I'm just gonna pass the, these guys into the right um, Spot. So let me take the CPU ones. So here, these two guys are the CPU. So they are gonna go up there. And then, or here, because that one is actually uh, blocked by the uh, cooler. And then these guys are gonna be uh, connected with the um, GPU. These two are gonna be connected with the GPU, so I'm gonna connect them. I'm gonna push them through this one, if I can. Or just here. And that's it. I'm gonna later take care of the cabling. Let me now just Make sure everything is working. Okay, here we are. GPU guys, the motherboard, the CPU. Okay, oh, it's gonna be very close. I might have to stick them through this. Um, let me see. Trial and error, baby, trial and error. Okay. Finally. Nice. They are plugged in correctly. It's a bit tight there, so I'm struggling, but we're going to make it work. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna now push the rest of the cable inside the hole there, just to make it a bit tidier. Looking good. Next up, the motherboard connector is right here. Let me try and stick it in. Nice. Okay, that was a lot of force. And finally, last but not least, the GPU cards. 
Uh, the GPU connectors, okay. Here it is, one, and then two. You can tell by the this dent here, uh, you can probably see it, the, the white thingy. Um, basically that's the orientation where you need, that's how you know where how you need to orient the, the connectors here and we are done. Guys, that's it. I think we have, I think we have everything now in place. I'm just gonna do some cable management, but like that's basically it. We've connected the CPU, we've connected the GPU, we have the power for the motherboard that's gonna connect pretty much everything else. I'm just gonna do some cable management and then just go through the list of components I bought, make sure, um, just mentally go through and make sure they are all connected as expected and uh, then we can power this thing on. Okay, let's quickly go through the cabling, uh, the connections. So we have the GPU. GPU is um, basically placed inside of the PCI 16X slot. Uh, it's connected with the two VGA connectors, so that's good. We have CPU, it's in the AM5 socket, and it's connected with those two headers in the top left of the motherboard, so that's good. CPU cooler, we connected the one um, in the beginning of the video, basically of the assembly. Basically, we have the ARGB header and we have the fan header, both are connected. Motherboard, we just connected the motherboard with the ATX cable. Memory has the, the power from the, is, is sourcing the power from the motherboard, so that's good. Um, NVMe uh, storage is basically also sourcing the power from the, from the motherboard, that's good. Case, uh, we connected the front panel connectors, that's good. PSU, we just connected all of the uh, cables we had, two CPU cables, two VGA uh, motherboard, and we are done. Let's try and power this on, put a monitor and hope nothing explodes. Okay, look at this beast of a cable, man. This is thick, thick. Okay guys, I somehow forgot to turn on the camera while I was just plugging in the power cord. I put it down there. I connected the HDMI to the monitor here and the monitor is also just connect with the power plug, that's all. And then I hit on the power button right there. So here it is and here you can see my fancy Asus motherboard being lit up. I don't see any error codes there, so that's a good sign. Let's try and hit the power button and see what happens. Okay, we have an error code. Error code 15. I better turn it off. Turning it off just to double check what's the 15 error code and then I'll get back. Looks beautiful. Okay guys, uh, apparently the code number 15, let me show you here, is just uh, basically expected stuff. That's some type of a setup. So hopefully I, I did not do anything uh, fatal <laughs> by turning it off during that process. So it says here, I don't know where you can see, uh, pre-memory system agent initialization is started. So I turned it off, so that might be uh, a bad thing, but let's see, hopefully not. So I'm gonna connect the uh, monitor with the HDMI inside of the uh, GPU right here, directly connected there, so that's good. And now, hopefully we see some sign of life from the, from the monitor. Let me see whether everything is cool. Okay, let's try and power it on. So I'm gonna hit the power on button. Okay. Oh, I have a wire here that's nasty. But other than that, I don't see any problems here. Look at this. Look at this, oh my God. It took me a lot. It took me basically two evenings to get this uh, done because I was filming, trying to set everything up. But now if you gave me this, um, the same components and you were to tell me, uh, go and assemble a machine, I would probably need less than an hour, like 40 minutes or something. Now that I know everything, it's very simple in retrospect, but it took some time to get here. 
I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm gonna wait until 15 is um, uh, done. I'm gonna wait until the the LED display. I, I, my brain is not working anymore. Okay, I see some numbers. It's glitching. Okay, that's bad. 4266, what's that motherfucker? Okay, that's CPU initialization, all is good. 66 is CPU initialization, 42... 42 is... No idea. Okay guys, here we are. Um, I'm gonna show you the current terror message I'm hitting the, 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 with the error code uh, 42. So I'm just going to... Turn it on. You can see how it looks like. So it's 15 now, it's glitching, and then it hits 42 after a second. 97, blah blah blah, some random numbers. I think that's just a those are just boots si signals or something. Um Okay. Actually, it's now converging towards a different error code. I'm not sure what's going on. There is also a um, one of the diodes is lighting up. So I think what we need to do is, according to what I read and saw a couple of videos, is basically I need to update the BIOS. So I'm going to go to the official website and uh, basically just install it. So you can see here in the manual, and the manual was super useful throughout the process. So here's the manual and you can see here basically this BIOS update utility. So I just need to uh, basically download the file to the USB flash drive and then insert into a special slot back then back there on the case and after that basically uh, Yeah, I'm gonna walk you through the process, but that's it in a nutshell I Actually took a look at the manual and this D7 code mean, means that basically there is no input device um, Plugged in so I'm gonna try and plug in the keyboard uh, and uh, hopefully that's gonna remove this error. So I'm going to first power it off, basically. And then I'm going to insert a keyboard right here. And let's go through the process again. I'm going to turn it on again. Let's see whether we have some other error. <laughs> okay, now it's 42. Okay, now it's converging towards 42. And, um, oops, no, it's oscillating, wait a bit. Okay, 99, I'm getting new errors. Let's see what's 99. I'm basically just tracking this manual and there is the appendix right here. So I'm just reading the codes. Uh, 99 means what? Let's find it. Super IO initialization. Okay, probably just initializing the keyboard or something. Um, yeah, in any case, I'm going to uh, continue on doing what I uh, started and that's um, to download the BIOS and install the fresh BIOS. Let's do it. Okay guys, so I just went ahead and took a uh, basically USB flash drive um, and I'm going to plug it in my laptop and we're going to download the um, the BIOS so you can see the website here on the on the screen and basically what I've done oops let me just insert it properly and so what I've done uh, is I just downloaded this this um, uh, file here you can see the the, the link uh, and then I just unzipped uh, the file, and turns out there is this. There are two files, so you just have to run the BIOS renamer, and then basically you can see the file name has changed. And now I have to copy paste it on, like to the to the flash drive. So I'm gonna do that, and now the flash is ready, and I'm gonna insert it into a special slot, into a special USB slot um, on the back side of the of the case. And there is also a special button. So this is like ASUS specific, but I thought walking you through in case uh, you um, end up doing something similar. So I'm gonna eject the drive here, and let's do the the, the BIOS installation. 
Okay, so here is the BIOS slot somewhere here. So I'm just going to uh, plug in the the flash there. Looks like it's uh, detected. I'm getting some 64 code. Let me just check what's going on there. I don't know. It says some CPU DXE initialization is started. Super confusing. It might be better not to have the, <laughs> the code. So I'm constantly overthinking what's going on. Um, looks like it's uh, detected. Uh, judging by the glow of the, of the drive. So I'm just going to try now and hold the, the button for three seconds. Nothing is happening, man, I'm scared. I think we're making some progress here. So um, there was basically an error message. You might have seen it before that says just hit Y uh, to do something. I was not sure whether I want to do that or just basically just try the BIOS thingy. But because this did not work, I tried the Y thingy. So I just hit Y and uh, now we have the, as you can see here on the screen, uh, everything seems to be detected. You can see the motherboard, we can see the CPU, AMD Ryzen 9, we can see the memory, 64 gigabytes, all is good there. We can see that M, um, the, the, the uh, NVMe uh, SSD is also detected, two terabytes. So, so far so good. Now I'm going to attempt to basically just hit, uh, hold the um, BIOS button here. And after three seconds, it should start blinking. So let me, let me try and basically zoom in here. So it should start blinking after three seconds. So let's try it. It's not working for some reason. Okay, trying to turn it on again. Maybe something um, new will happen this time. <laughs> Let's see. I'm in the unknown completely. Uh, let's observe the error codes. Delete to enter the BIOS. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Got it. Press F1 to run setup. Okay, let's press F1. Okay, so here is something going on. We have a screen. Um, I don't have a mouse, so let me see where I can just control it with a keyboard. Um, yeah, let me connect the mouse and then I think we'll be good to go. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Uh, by the way, the bias is so cool, it's literally like a normal uh, operating system application, that's very cool. So let me see whether there is something interesting here. Uh, all good system language, blah, blah, blah. Security, what's security? What's this one? Why are you not clicking? CPU temperature seems to be fine, 49 degrees, that's cool. Huh, we might be able to do this from the BIOS. So let me just find the necessary instructions in the menu. Okay, I think what we need to do is go to the advanced section of the BIOS, go to the tool menu to select Asus Easy Flash 3 Utility and press enter. Okay, press enter. Uh, press the left arrow key to switch to the drive field. Press the up down to find the USB flash disk that contains the latest BIOS and then press enter. Reboot the system when the update process is done. Okay, so I think we just have to hit enter. Uh, please back up your BitLocker recovery key and suspend BitLocker encryption in the operating system before updating your BIOS. To avoid unpredictable situations, please load default settings before updating the BIOS. The system will restart before updating the BIOS. Okay. Uh, no. Let's do the following thing. Let's exit. Do you want to leave? Yes, we we'll want to leave. Exit. Uh, load optimize. So that's what they said. I have to select the load optimize default item under exit M menu or press. Okay. Yes. Or press F5. 
load optimus defaults yes okay i think then we are good now we can go back to the tool let's go to the utility here let's go to this guy and um okay i think we're good we can just hit the yes here do you want to read this file yes and let's see what's going on do you really want to update e yes i do processing let's see what happens now don't you dial me don't you dial me i'm gonna press the power on button again and let's see what's going on getting code 15 Okay, pre-memory initialization process. Okay, um, okay, it turned off again. I'll have to. Let's hope for the best this time. So, number fifteen, and there is some light going on on the leftmost LED, as far as I can tell. Let me just double check that. Um, the second one from the left. Let's see what it means. Okay, that's promising. Zero forty two. Nine nine. Okay, Republic of Gamers. It's turning on and we're in the BIOS. Okay, let's see what A9 means. There is the A9 um, start of setup. Okay, cool. Um, I think this is good. I think uh, it's properly set up, I would say. Um, let me just do some Googling whether I need to set up something before I install install the operating system, but other than that, I think we're good. Okay, let's exit and see what's going on. Got it, so it's just entering the BIOS by default, probably that's because we don't have any operating system. Okay, I think this is a normal behavior. Uh, this should be normal behavior, so I'm just gonna now um, hit the power off button, hit the power on button again, just see everything is working consistently. Okay, it's offering me to enter the, the BIOS and because there is no OS, it's just entering the BIOS. That's it. And uh, I end up with the A9 code again, I think. I think that was the same code as before. So A9 means start of setup. Yeah, I think we're good. So that's it, I think. <laughs> uh, I'm going to install the, the, the RGB fans now. Uh, basically, I bought these beauties. So I'm going to now set up the fans uh, and then light it up and see how the, the, the computer looks like. And I think that's gonna be the end of this video um, because then in the next one, we're gonna install the OS, we're gonna install the drivers and the everything else that's needed. But this should be it. Cool, let me quickly unpack these bad boys. I have six of these uh, RGB, sorry, I have, uh, yeah, six of these RGB fans, and those are gonna be used to cool the case, basically. So let me open it up. Okay, a lot of cables, some controllers and stuff. Let's see what else is there. Okay, we have the the hub here we have the um, bunch of cables and um, this is USB-C mini or something I don't know no idea um, and screws three of these guys and two of these guys and this so I have to check out how to actually properly connect these I have no idea
moment of truth guys i'm gonna connect the monitor and uh try and see whether everything works as expected okay final test to see whether the fans are working as expected i'm gonna plug in the the power cord here and let's see how this thing is gonna work so that's good turning on the connector there and finally hitting the oh my god oh my god Woo! isn't this beautiful isn't this beautiful the moment of truth guys are you ready for this are you ready for this let me try and turn it on Oh my God. Oh my God. Ah, I'm going to sit here for the next uh, basically half an hour and just look at this thing. Oh my God. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Okay guys, this is the end of the video basically. Um, I just wanna share some of the experiences um, having done this uh, from scratch for the first time and finally we have this beautiful machine here. I, I literally think I'm gonna just enjoy and watch it over the next like 10 or 15 minutes or something. So basically from the from the very start, uh, from, from basically uh, putting in the uh, CPU, I thought I'm going to break it and so I was completely um, uh, insecure and so I had to go and, and Google and find a YouTube video and like literally Google like is it supposed to click blah 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 or whatever and then the same thing for RAM memory the same thing for NVMe SSD and then um, a lot of the struggle was just figuring out the right screws and um, and yeah and and the last component I added was were the fans the fans are also especially the ones I have here are fairly when you see the cabling and stuff that c comes out of the box and there is no instruction basically what to do you get completely confused so it's literally you do have to go and check out uh, some of the YouTube videos tutorials where people explain how to, how to do it properly uh, also for the RTX when I was plugging it in I was not sure it was not clicking and so I was not sure whether I'm, I'm so I'm always afraid to push too hard that's obviously the easiest method but I, I don't want to I don't want to do that I don't want to break a component so yeah, I think I think that's it. We saw that the BIOS is working, so the the computer uh, as it is is currently working. Uh, basically, uh, in the next video, I'm going to um, show you how to install the Ubuntu operating system, the Linux, uh, and then uh, basically CUDA drivers and finally the ML libraries and stuff. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and until next time, bye bye.